Oof, what a session I've had today. Definitely not fake takes. Definitely not. Okay, so today we're looking at a new set of alarms. They weren't real takes, in case you didn't gather from the intro. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Wolf Icon Q alarms. Now Ian has done a full in-depth video on the QI alarms, and there's various other items, including some of the uh, receivers, the hubs and things. Today I'm just gonna be focusing on the Q alarms. But before we jump into that, make sure that you subscribe to us and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads from us. And make sure you follow us on social media platforms as well, where there's regular updates. Time to set up in the shade, because it is sweltering. The manual and specification that came with these alarms will keep you occupied for quite a long time. But to make things a bit more manageable for us here today, I've whittled it down into five key points. When you're parking with your hard-earned cash, of course you want your bike alarms to do all the things that they need to do. But it all boils down to do they go beep and how do they sound when they go off. If you're anything like me, the bike alarm has to sound right when they're going off. If it sounds a bit naff, of course, I'm still happy I've got a bite, but it doesn't quite sound as good as well, does it? So have a sample of some of the sounds that might come from these alarms if you were to buy them. So for those three takes, I set the alarm to a different tone level. I had it all the way turned back to a, a low tone, lower beeps, all the way up to higher pitched tone, which is, if I have a bite alarm, I tend to like a higher pitch one. Don't know why, it's just personal preference, but that whole dial means you can fine tune it to exactly how you want. And you can always have each individual head at a different tone, different LEDs, which we'll get onto in a minute, so you know exactly which one has done what. The other thing you will have noticed is that there's drop back differentiation. So if I turn this alarm on and I'll grab the warranty card, which again, I'll get onto in a second, you'll notice that when I go forwards, you've got a single tone. I've got this on its maximum sensitivity at the moment. And if you get a drop back, you get a different tone. If it's quite a quite fast drop back, as you can hear, it's a singular tone. Well, there we go. And if it's a bit slower, you've got two differentiating tones. So it lets you know whether it's drop back and also the latching LEDs will flash on a drop back and then when it goes forwards, they will stay a solid color like so. So that is the sound in a nutshell. Oh, and the volume, it goes deafeningly loud. It also mutes as well. Now the sensitivity on these on its first setting is extremely sensitive. So if I turn them back on, this first mode is just two millimeters of movement to get any kind of indication in either direction. So very, very sensitive, which is ideal on days like today, where it's pretty still, no wind or whatever, and I want as much indication as possible. But the conditions aren't always as ideal as this, and you don't always need that much indication. If you've got wind moving your line or the toe in the lake or just lapping waves at your rod tips, you don't need it as sensitive. So that's where you can adjust it eight different modes on the dial on here. So that goes from two, six, 12, 18, 25, 35, 60, and 100 mil, I believe, I think. Don't quote me on that one. I'm pretty sure that's the different increments of movement. So it's on two at the moment. If I go all the way around to the last one, which I know is 100 mil, so 10 centimeters of movement, as you can see, a lot more is needed before I get a beep. So this is pretty much just about 10 centimeters, which is pretty good. And same in reverse. There we go. So a bit more than that is uh, how much movement you'll get before you get a beep. Perfect on really rough conditions and anywhere in between. If you link this up to the Icon Hub, you can actually get another eight settings on that. So rather than just the eight that you've got on here, you can have 16 different sensitivity settings on there. Whether you'll need that many, I don't know, but maybe there's that one occasion where you need just that little bit of adjustment that you can't quite get with the heads, but you can get through the head. But that is the sensitivity.
The main things you can customize on these alarms are the latching LEDs and the night light, which is in the center there. And those are accessed through this button on the side. It looks like three little buttons, but you press that and hold it and you get a little configuration of light sequence on the front and you adjust the latching LEDs through the volume knob. So you can either have it off, red, green, blue, or yellow. Move that back to level on red. And then the night light again is adjusted by the tone this time. So go from the top, you can have it off, red, green, blue, and you guessed it, yellow. Press and hold that button again. If I can find it, there it is. And that saves those settings so it remembers what I had that set as. So that's now back to the red lights on both. You can have red LEDs and a different color night light is completely up to you. And you can also adjust the brightness of those LEDs if you want. So that's the lights built into the ca into the camera, into the bike lines themselves. And there's also little holes here for beta lights. So if you wanted to put some additional little isotopes or little beta lights in there, you can do so just to make it glow a bit differently. If you didn't want all these lights on, you can have a subtle glow in there. That's pretty much the customizability there. If we go onto the back, you'll see, well, underneath actually, there's two different ports. You've got a smart port and an IQ port. So obviously the IQ port will attach to other IQ accessories in the range and the smart port you can put in illuminated indicators so whether they are wolf indicators or third party ones they will all fit into that port so if you've got illuminated uh, hangers or bobbins it should fit into the bottom of these alarms as well so that's the customizability the build quality on these as ian said in the video when he did the qis pretty much some of the best I've ever come across when it comes to bite alarms. As soon as I picked them up, well, when they arrived at my house and I picked one up, it was just solid. I mean, the size of them alone, you can't deny that they are a big alarm, but that still instills a bit of confidence in there because it's chunky. It's a bit of a feel thing. If you have this in your hand, you can feel it's chunky. The plastics are solid, they're not flimsy. The, the double screws in the bottom to keep the batteries in place, which is completely sealed off. Two screws rather than like a sliding back. That's just a little touch. The, the rubber ports that these slot into, they're not falling out any day of the week and they'll stay in there for a very long time, completely weather sealed. The rubber inlays for the rod are some of the grippiest I've ever come across. I just put my rod on it early and I was trying to move my rods around to get them set. I was thinking, what's my rod stuck on? And it was just the rubber inlays. And they go all the way around the front as well. So if you have your rods like I did earlier, where the rods are up like that, you've still got some rubber there that it can access. And if you have your rods upright, it's stuck from side to side and forward back movements as well. So really, really sturdy rubbers on there. But yeah, the build quality, I mean, I'm about to be getting a, an extension done in our house. And if it wasn't for the price of these, which we'll get onto in a second, I would consider these as probably foundations for them. They are absolutely solid. And if you were worried that they would get damaged, I don't see how they could. They do come supplied with really thick hard cases as well. So these aren't flimsy at all. And they just click over the top of the snag ears and click around the base of that. So even in transit, if you're worried that they were gonna, 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 get, gonna get damaged like this, and put these cases on which are included but yeah i think i could run these over with my car i'm not going to because i'm going to get onto the price in a second but i wouldn't uh, i wouldn't bet against them surviving and lastly the price as of the point of filming so today i looked at these online and found a set of three and a receiver the uh, cheapest i could find right now was 730 pounds Just waiting for the um, comment section to uh, die down. So yes, it's a lot of money. £730, you could buy yourself a cheap runaround car for that amount of money. So granted, it's not gonna be for everyone, but if you've got the expendable cash to purchase something like this, rest assured that they are worth it, I think, because they're just built to last. There's so much confidence in these from Wolf that they come with a two-year warranty as standard and if you uh, authenticate or what is it? I've forgotten the word now. I'm not reaching into my arse, I'm grabbing the warranty card. If you uh, register your alarm, sorry, that's what I was looking for. I don't know why I'm um, reaching around to my backside, found that word for me. But if you register these alarms, it gives you another year's warranty. So if you purchase these, three year warranty, nothing should go wrong. And I should have really mentioned this in the build quality part of things. And these are British built. So if anything goes wrong with these, 
you can access customer services, get something fixed in this country. Every single item is quality assessment and quality check before it leaves the factory. It's a built in Britain, fixed in Britain, if it should ever go wrong. Everyone you're gonna deal with is gonna be British and in this country. So that makes it a lot easier. And if you like to buy a British, then go for Wolf as well. So yes, I know the comment section is still gonna be saying that's expensive for bite alarms. But if you've got the money to pay for something like this, that's gonna last just like if you wanted to buy a fancier car all cars get you from a to b hopefully some of them will get you there and better than others or more enjoyment than others so do take a look at the q alarms from wolf it does that when you turn them off as well for the record so that is the icon q alarms now as i mentioned ian has done a full video on the q eyes which are slightly more beefed up versions of these so if these aren't enough features for you then have a look at those i believe that has a vibration assist in there as well when it comes to the indications you've got a roller and the vibration assist this is just the roller wheel but as you saw extremely sensitive as they were so for more information do head over to the wolf website they've got the whole list of different icon items all the specifications the manual is fully downloadable so if you get all of these i think how does that work or how do i adjust this it's all on there so you can download it onto your phone easy as that you don't have to take a manual around with you all the time well, that's pretty much everything on those for me today so if you haven't done so already please subscribe to us and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads oh and like the video if you did that'd be much appreciated and also follow us on all the social media platforms coming up on the bottom of our screen right now so i'm gonna go fishing now actually but before i go click on the uh, subscribe button there hopefully it's on that side and not in the wrong way or watch one of the videos on the right of my head. You might enjoy that one, or that one. Up to you. Oh, there's fish all over the surface. Time to get them off the top.